John 12, 20 through 33, Jesus teaches about his death. Some Greeks were among those who had come to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and made a request. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Jesus replied, The time has come for the Son of God to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. Whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there my servant will also be. My Father will honor whoever serves me. Now I am deeply troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this time? No, for this is the reason I have come to this time. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard and said, It's thunder. Others said, An angel spoke to him. Jesus replied, This voice wasn't for my benefit, but for yours. Now is the time for judgment of this world. Now this world's ruler will be thrown out. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me. He said this to show how he was going to die. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A story is told about a king, sometimes it's an Indian king, or Raj, who was going away for a long time. And he had three daughters, and so he gave each of his three daughters a single grain of rice. Now the oldest daughter, she was so proud of that gift, she took a gold thread and she wrapped it around and around that, that single grain of rice and she put it in a box and she put it away in a special place on a shelf and she thanked her father for her wonderful gift all the days he was gone. The second daughter thought it was a bunch of foolishness, what good is one grain of rice? And she threw it away. But the third daughter spent time looking at that grain of rice and then looking at the kingdom, which was a little bit, but really poor. People did not have enough food. And she looked at that rice and she realized that rice could change everything. That single grain. So she planted it. And then she took the grains from that plant when it ripened and she planted them again and again and again until she had two full bags of grain. She gave one of those bags to one of the peasants and said, the only thing you must do is give one bag of grain when you raise this, one bag to someone else and then continue raising your grain. And so one became two, and two became four, and four became eight. Eight becomes 16, 32, 64. Let's talk about peasants in the community. 64, 128, 256, 512. Over a thousand bags in just about 10 seasons. A thousand people. And the next year was 2,000 people. And the next season was four, it just grows astronomically until when the father returned after his long, long journey, he looked out over his kingdom. He saw the verdant fields of growing grain and he felt thanks to the gods. And then he went home and he asked each of the daughters what they did with their marvelous single grain. And he heard the one, the one brought his, her little box and opened up and there and, and wrapped all the, the gold thread and there was that grain. And she said, I kept it for you. And he said, you're a fool. So he gave her a very small palace and a very small income and told her to go away. The second daughter said, ah, grain of rice, I must be that away. And so he sent her to an ashram, which is a, a convent, <laughs> where she could contemplate her foolishness. And then came the third daughter, and he said to her, Are you the reason that the fields are all green? She said, Yes. 
And he said, I give you the kingdom. Because you saw the truth of a single grain. A single seed. Jesus uses seeds all over the place in the Gospels. He talks about, he talks about the mustard seed. Little mustard seed. And this is your faith. It doesn't matter how big your faith is, even if it's the size of a mustard seed. You have it or you don't. Very binary. Very yes or no. One or zero. True or false. You have it. You got it. And in the gospel it says you plant this seed and it becomes a bush or a tree. But the word they use for mustard seed in the Greek is a common name for a weed. Mustard weed. You guys ever deal with mustard weeds here? Maybe that's back east. Uh, you got a little of it here, uh-huh. Gets in the field and it's like crazy getting it out. He's saying that his faith, this kingdom of God is going to grow like mustard weed. It's gonna take over all of the structures and injustices and lack of mercy of this world. And it's a new life, this new kingdom. A seed that you can't really even see is enough faith to change the world. But there is the problem of what do you do when you get the wrong seeds? In my mother's land uh, in central Kansas, they've been having a problem with ryegrass in the midst of the wheat. Somebody messed up at the seed cleaners and they've got rye. Maybe there was a flood, too. Brought all the rye seed in from the... Anyway, they won't pay you for rye at the, at the elevator, right? <laughs> they won't pay you for cheap. And yet, you have spent all that time and energy and prayer to raise nothing. And Jesus says, this is the case of the wheat and the tares, which is kind of the same thing. He says, a man planted a field. And an enemy came in and sowed these tares. Now, what is the man to do? His, his uh, help said, we'll go in and we'll hoe up all the wrong ones. He said, no, you'll, you'll probably hoe up, tear out the good grain. Let it be. Let it be. And when harvest comes, you can collect the tares, you can collect the wheat, and you can throw it in the fire. The cheat in the fire. And you can put the wheat in the bin. Let God take care of it because there are things that grow that aren't so good in our midst. And we get all carried away about how we're going to rip out these terrible things. And yes, we do need to address these issues that are tearing us apart. They're absorbing our energy. And yet, the first thing to do is let it go and let God take care of it. And then God will call us to do what's next. We have to let go. Seeds. These Greeks, these foreigners, these visitors to Jerusalem say they want to see Jesus. They want to see who it is that is changing the world by his words and his actions and his very presence. They want to see him. And so do we. We went to the sub-district meeting in Pueblo yesterday, and they had a very, very good speaker who is the congregation, he's the revitalizer. He, he is here to create vital congregations. And he's working with churches, he's working with new starts, he's working with we who are struggling. And he said, there's a lot of things, but the most important was, we are here 
because Christ has changed our lives. We are here to be disciples, to transform the world because we're disciples. And we are here to make disciples to transform the world. We are here because we have seen Jesus and we are here to share what we have seen just like when the, those Greek people came to Philip and Philip went to Andrew and they had to go through all the steps to get to Jesus. They were looking for the answer for changing their lives. And then Jesus says something that absolutely floored them and floors us. I've got to die. I've got to die. You're the one who is going to change the world. You are the Messiah. And you say you have to die. He says, yes, I have to die. Because that one seed all wrapped up in a golden thread is nothing. And that one life lived 2,000 years ago in the backwater of, of the Holy Land of Israel is nothing. But when the seed dies, when the seed is put in the ground, a miracle happens. And we start to trust God for that miracle. When we were in my very first church in Dawn, Missouri, they had a budget where they had basically collected last year everything they expected to spend this year. And this year, their collection would go in the bank to pay for next year. And so their budget was an honest budget. They had so many thousand dollars in the bank, and they spent it very carefully. Their budget was real. But being a seminarian, I said, hey, you, you've got this money. You need to trust God. You need to give this money to mission, to reach out to, to other people, to spread the good news, and, and then just trust God for next year. It's not right that you have all this in the bank. And he said, oh, it's right, all right, because we trust God every year. We don't gamble, they said, because we pour everything we have into the ground. We dump it all on the ground. We sow it, we plant it, and we trust God to bring new life and to give us a crop. And sometimes it works. And sometimes we barely scrape by. But we trust God, and we're not about to gamble our church on anything. I learned my lesson. They already knew the power of the seed. They already knew that for new life, the old life has to die. That is so true and so hard to get to in our lives. I'm not talking about after you die, die. I'm talking about the realities that are hemming you in, are encrusted on your soul, who keep you from getting to Jesus, seeing Jesus, these Angers are my favorite one, and habits, and expectations of who I am and who you are, the things that we think are us. These keep us from seeing Jesus, and they have to die. You see, we know today that in each seed there is a germ, the seed is dormant, not dead, waiting for the right situation. But it still has to be put in that right situation and given a chance to grow. And the same for you and me. Choosing which situation we're going to go to. You know, God is offering us all kinds of possibilities. Often we can't see them because we're so busy after our own possibilities, the things we think we need. If I could only get enough money, if I could only get enough people to come to this church, if I could only get transferred to a bigger church, 
I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> because I discovered in about the year 1999, that about halfway through our, my ministry, that ladder wasn't leaning against anything because God was not going to hold that one up. I was called to be here and to do this. And that's it. Plant the seed. Plant the seed so there might be new life. Jesus is here not to be the Holy One. That's God. That's God, God beyond our understanding. Jesus is here to be the glory of God. The sunshine hitting the earth. Or he might have said, we can't see what a seed does in the ground. But we can see the glory of the power of the seed and of God's power rising up. Just as I must be raised up. So that you can see. And you can be healed. And you can find new life. And then the important thing. Is that as disciples, we share the possibility of new life. With everybody. That's the power of a seed. 